Hello and welcome to a new video about alternating current. Today it's again about mathematics. Last time we talked about uh, complex numbers. Today we want to talk about how to calculate with those complex numbers. Because only we just defined complex numbers does not really mean we can calculate with them. Uh, calculate so we know addition, subtraction, multiplication, uh, division, exponating, uh, root extraction, then we have derivate, integrate, those stuffs. Uh, how are those things working with complex numbers? Let's have a look at this. Okay? So let's start in grammar school. Let's start with addition. Maybe addition. Screen. Huh? Use screen. Make the sum of two complex numbers, Z1 plus Z2. Okay? So actually we have A1 plus JB1, that's Z1, plus A2 plus JB2. And that's actually a1 plus A2 plus J, B1 plus B2. That's it. Yeah. Addition. Not that difficult. To add two complex numbers, add all real parts, add all, uh, all imaginary parts, then you're done. That's it. Subtraction. We have Z1 minus Z2. These are complex. So actually we have A1 plus JB1 minus A2 plus JB2. Yeah. So we are ending up at A1 minus A2 plus JB1 minus B2. Because if I bring this inside, yeah, we have here maybe I write it down, A1 plus JB1 minus A2 minus JB2. Yeah. Now, that's our new number Z. I'm going to write it down here also, that this is our new number Z. Yeah. Also not too difficult, right? So, subtract the correct real parts from each other, subtract, subtract the correct yeah, imaginary parts from each other, and that's our new, our new value. Multiplication. Huh? Multiplication. Multiplication. So we have here now, a Z1 multiplied and as by with a Z2. Hmm? So let's write it up. A1 plus JB1, A2 plus JB2. <coughs> the thing we have to do is now we have to solve this equation. That's it. Huh? So actually we have here A1 multiplied by A2 plus a1 multiplied by JB2 plus JB1 multiplied by A2 plus J squared B1 B2. Right? And what is J squared? J squared is minus 1. Okay? So actually we have here, I write here, A1 multiplied by A2 and then we have minus B1, B2. And here we have to write plus J. Factor out this J. Uh, we are here with A1, B2, 
plus a2 b1. That's multiplication with component representation. See? Oh, this was not all that lie. That was not that easy. Yeah? The, um, how does it look like if we have a set one multiplied by set two and we have both? We have both in polar representation. Z1 e raised by the power of j phi1 multiplied by z2 e raised by the power of phi2. Yeah? So here we have z1 multiplied by z2. This is again our z. E j phi1 multiplied e j phi2. Just change the order because multiplication doesn't really care about the order. And here, how do you multiply two exponenting functions? You add up, you have to summarize the powers. So we have here z1, z2, e, j, phi1, plus phi2. And that's z. This is much easier. This is much easier. We multiply the absolute value and sum up the angles, sum up the arguments. That's easy, right? It's much easier than in component. Let's see how this looks like if we make a division. Let's try it once again in component representation, z1 divided by z2. So this is a1 plus jb1 divided by a2 plus jb2. I make the brackets big, even if I did not, do not know this, did not, do not need those, uh, but I started with brackets, so. What now? Huh? What I really don't like is here this, this, in the denominator, this, this, this J. This, I, I want to have this only one number. This would be nice. Yeah? So I only want to, to make this as one real number. And now I make a little trick. Yeah? I make A1 plus JB1 divided by A2 plus JB2. And now I extend my fraction with the same in the denominator and the numerator with the same value, and the same value is a2 minus jb2. So the conjugate complex value of this one, and here above, that this is an equation, I have to do this. Okay, so let's now uh, solve this. So we have a1, a2, minus j a1 b2 uh, plus j a2 b1 and now we have minus j squared b1 b2 all right divided by and here we have a2 squared plus j a2 b2 minus j a2 b2 and then we have minus j squared b2 squared. Mm -hmm. And now look at that. Because I selected, trickily selected the conjugate complex value, those two zit, gone. Mm -hmm. So let's see what is what is happening over here. So we have a1, a2, j squared plus b1, b2, plus j, a2, b1, minus a1, b2, divided by 
a2 square plus b2 square. Okay. Yeah, looking good. Now, this is the real part. This is a this would be then the imaginary part, so I can write it a1, a2 plus b1, b2 divided by a2 squared plus b2 squared plus j. And now I also make here a2 b1 minus a1 b2 a2 squared plus b2 squared. Component, real part, imaginary part. This is our new value set. And now please learn this and um, for the test. <laughs> it's not that easy, right? Division is really not that easy. Look what is happening if we are not using the component representation, but the polar representation. So we have here a set 1 divided by set 2 is set 1 e e j phi set 2 e raised by the power of g phi 2 phi 1 of course we have. So we have here set 1 divided by set 2 and then we have e j phi 1 multiplied by e minus j phi 2. Mm -hmm. If I flip the flip the sign of a power, then I can write it up. Hmm? Here and we have to sum those up again. So we have here set one divided by set two, the absolute values, fraction of division of the absolute values, multiplied by a j phi one minus phi two. The subtraction of the of the angles. This is again, so this is again our set. This is much easier. This this is much easier. Yeah. Here we could say, all right, yeah. it's it's more complicated, but here is really more complicated. Yeah. So multiplication and division in polar representation are highly recommended. Highly recommended. Addition and subtraction in in a representation of component representation. Okay. Grammar school, check. Now let's come to middle school. Mm -hmm. So, next thing is exponenting. And now that we know this multiplicate, this is something to do with multiplicate, yeah? Okay? Because we want to set raised by the power of n. Yeah? So actually, this is z e j phi raised by the power of n. I don't show how it would look like in component representation. It's simply not bearable. Huh? Here. It's easy, yeah, because every factor I can exponate by its own. And if we want to have a power raised by power, we have to multiply. It's easy, right? Surprisingly easy, exponating a complex number. Yeah? Exponate the the absolute value and multiply the f the, the angle. All right. Now make a root extraction. So what we want to have is somewhere a root from complex number of the nth grade. Yeah. So, and as we know, instead of a root, we can write 1 divided by n, raised by the power of 1 divided by n. So, it's actually set 1 divided by n and e j phi divided by n. Yeah. So, this is the nth root of the, of the absolute value and multiplied by j and now we have to divide the, the angle by 
N. It was also not that difficult, right? And now let's come to a little bit higher mathematics. Let's come to uh, derivate. Derivate. And this time we are not using phi. We say our phi equals omega multiplied by t. Because this is what we later have to use. All right, so we have our d set and we will derivate it to the time. Yeah? So we have actually our d set multiplied by a of j omega t to the t constant factor I can write before, and the only thing I have to derive is this. What is the derivation of a raised by the power of something? It's e a e e raised by the power of something. It's e raised by the power of something. So actually we have z e j omega t, but then we have the inner derivation multiplied by the inner derivation of t is one j omega. Yeah. So we have actually j omega z e j omega t. And look at that, this is set. So we are actually having j omega set. We multiply the complex number to derivate, we multiply the complex number with j omega. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So uh, simple, but this is, this is nice, this is easy, right? So derivate in complex numbers is really, it will be shifted by 90 degree because complex numbers sum up the, the angles. J omega has 90 degrees, so they will shift the number to 90 degree above. Yeah? And, and it will get longer yeah? because it's multiplied with, with omega. Well, let's, let's call it scaled. It will get scaled because if it's a high omega, it will be long. If it's a tiny omega, it will be shorter. But it will be skate. Yeah? Derivate, integrate. Integrating in this video the integration of a, of a complex number. So we are integrating our complex number set or to the time. So we have integrate set a j omega t dt comp, a standard factor constant factor e j omega d d d. Again, we have to consider the inner derivation. So we have to divide by j omega e j omega t. All right. So this is one divided by j omega z e j omega t. And here we have again z. So we are ending up in the situation that it's 1 divided by j omega multiplied by z. Integrate is a division by j omega, derivate is a multiplication by j omega in complex numbers, and that's it. Huh? This is nice to use this. Hmm? Of course you could say, hey, look what I have here. I have a fancy, fancy calculator. I always wear it on, I'm always wearing this, of course, I do not leave the house without this. Yeah? And I can enter here, uh, here are my complex numbers and so on. And we can, we can use an eye, we can use an angle and everything. Right. And I really would advise to get used to your calculator, know exactly how to use it with complex numbers, because this is what we're going to do in future. Uh, of course, all those rules I now explained, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponenting, root extraction, derivate, integrate, you can do it with your calculator. Uh, maybe derivate and integrate is already difficult, but you should know what is behind, okay, so that you can guess how, how good and a solution calculator is. 
Now we talked about complex numbers. Right? We're talking about alternating current. And now we did two, two videos about complex numbers. How, and there must be a connex, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Yes, the connex is coming in next video. Next video we will, I will tell you how we can uh, sinusoidal quantities, how we can display them as complex, with a complex number. Yeah? What, how is this mapping then? Okay, next video for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.